before I take you up into the vegetable garden, I just want to show you what's going on with this little pomegranate here, see? Something's been eating it. So I'm going to put up a camera. And I'm going to put it just here so I can catch that animal, whatever it is. And we'll photograph it and see what it is so we can find out what's eating my pomegranate. This is a little little motion sensor camera from Keen. I'm not sponsored by Keen or anything like that. But if you want to know what it is, it's called a Keen. Alrighty. So just place that like that. So whatever lands in front of here and starts munching away at the pomegranate, we'll get it on camera. Action! Put it out here in the sunshine so it can get the sun, so it gets charged. Point it up to the sky, there we go. I might just take away the other pomegranates. And, uh, oh, there's another one down there. Oh, that one looks like it's really ripe and ready. And that one there has been munched already, so you can see it's almost hollow. And I'll take this one. So at least I salvaged five. I can take them up to the kitchen now and put them in a salad. I really like pomegranate. That's why I got it growing here in the winter garden. So if the camera captures whatever's eaten that, we'll see it at the end of this video. And I'm gonna go and put these up in the shed, but then I'm, oh, I'm looking at my mango tree and I'm thinking I might even harvest them, but there's so many. Oh, bucket. That's all I need to harvest my mangoes, so why not do that? So I will. I've been waiting and waiting. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh, did you see that? Just popped off right in my hand. Means they're ready. And a little bit of advice for those people that are picking lots of mangoes. What you've got to do is watch out for the sap. Because if you get the sap in your eyes, it's going to sting your eyes. And some people with sensitive skin, it's going to make your skin itchy. So just when you do it, just flick them away from you, see? Break them away from you. Then they don't spray. Ooh, nice one. I'll get you too. See how easy they are? The tree's going, oh, that's a load off my shoulders. I'll fill this bucket up. There's three, four, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, and then fourteen, sixteen. Oh, last mango. Thank you, mango tree. Seventeen. Just got a lovely smell. That's pretty impressive from this little mango tree that's only five years old. Its first year of producing mangoes and it gave me 17 mangoes. Very nice. Thank you. Yeah. So that's five pomegranates and 17 mangoes so far. Oh, what's that? Oh no, the culprit's in the fig tree now. We don't want it in the fig tree. Look, that could be what's eating my pomegranate, guys. I might have to harvest my figs now before we go any further. I don't know if we'll be able to get out of the food forest on this episode, but I'm glad I saw that king parrot there because I think it's looking at my figs because my figs are pretty close to being harvesting now. Oh, look. Look like that's where it's already found one. That's nice and ripe in there. See, this one is almost ready to pick as well. Like other fruits, figs do not ripen after they've been picked. So if they're hard and green, You've got to leave them on the tree. And because the king parrot's found them, he doesn't mind that they're a bit hard. But when I like them, they've got to be soft. So I'm going to cover the tree up with a net. The net that I got from the mango tree. I'm going to now put it on this one. We want it up over the top. Like, hop over there. That's better. See, these. I've worked hard for these figs. That king parrot doesn't work hard at all. He's just seen it. I know they've got the GPS kind of tracker on where they know there's the annual fruits in the, in the area. But I don't know how they found this new one. Well, you don't want to give them any because then they'll say, well, come back and get more. But my net's not any bigger than that, so that'll have to scare them away for now. So, oof, I forgot my bucket was happy. Well, let's go to the garden and have a look at the vegetable garden. It's getting on. <laughs> So on my last video, I mixed a bunch of compost, but I forgot to put my comfrey in. So today I'm gonna to put the comfrey in the compost. I really grow my comfrey only for the compost. I know it has beneficial qualities. So I've always got some if I need it because it grows back so quickly. You can see I harvested this one here on this side a few weeks ago. So I just grow it besides my compost pile so 
so it's nice and close. I also got plenty down in the swales as well. And you chop it right back to the bottom here and it'll just reshoot. And comfrey's got a lot of trace minerals and a lot of really good things for the plant's roots when it wants to start growing. And so comfrey's a really good thing to have in your compost or your bacteria brews or your worm farm. I might have to just strap this one back here again. See, it's important I keep this fence up because it keeps the bandicoot out of the beds here. Nice bit of comfrey, and that'll get mixed in when I turn it. Okay, moving along. I kind of feel like in the mood for harvesting, so I'm going to just continue harvesting, and this time. I'm up in my vegetable garden <clears throat> and I've been eating from this beautiful produce all summer long. I've had cucumbers and I've had carrots and beetroot and herbs and spices and fruit. But it's time to clean everything up because it's getting towards the end of the season. So I'm just going to clean up my beds right now and um, harvest the rest of my carrots. All the vegetables that I got in my vegetable garden this year actually all come from this tin. that I got on the weedergarden.com. I'm gonna harvest what I haven't harvested already and just clean up this bed and weed it. Oh, look at that one. It's a white one. Huh, it's a white carrot. I don't know what happened to that one, but that's interesting. I like that diversity. Look at this one. That looks a nice one. I don't chop and drop on the vegetable garden because it just gets too cluttered and there's not enough room to plant my seeds and it just looks messy. So I put all the stuff here up onto the compost pile, make it into beautiful soil again. Everything that I can eat from here, I take and eat. And everything I don't eat, I put back in the compost, turn it back into soil and it comes back in the garden. So it's this continual cycle. that's all starting from the sun. Some more carrots. That's a nice one. But what I want to do is I want to show you my beetroot because I got, I reckon the world's largest beetroot growing here in the weedy garden. And it's not in this bed, it's in the other bed. So I'll just finish this bed first. I've got a few more things down the front here that I can take this lettuce. I'm sick of looking at this. I think the chooks will like this lettuce. So I'll just take some of this down to the chickens. Okay, yeah, chook, 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 chook. Yeah, chook, 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 chook. Yeah, chook, chook, chook. Here we go. Oh, I think I'll take this cucumber plant as well. Because that's already given us about a bucket full of cucumbers and I've pickled some and lots of salads oh, there's another big one right there look I just pop around the other side and get that the last of the cucumbers as well also got these ones see one these ones are all yucky and rotten they're the perfect ones to collect your seeds for next year because then they're ready to go if you just um, put them in a little bit of glass of lemon juice for a couple of hours and that'll take that slimy coat off them you do that with tomato seeds as well so and just uh, then rinse the lemon juice off them let them dry out on a bit of tissue paper and then put them in a, an envelope so that's how they should be more or less when you collect the seeds but right these ones i've got plenty of cucumber seeds so they're going in the compost and these ones um, i think i'll put it in the bucket with my mangoes and my pomegranates and I'm sure there's going to be more things here in the garden. I've got carrots, I washed them, but the beetroot. I'll show you the beetroot as well. One beetroot, two beetroot, three beetroot, four. That's not a bad size. Every seed I want to give its full potential, okay? And so I don't want to plant a bunch of these really close to each other. Because when they come out of the ground, they're going to go, oh, geez, there's not a lot of room here. I just, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll try and be here and fill up the space I got but if you put them nicely spaced apart and uh, nothing close by them then it gets big leaves and it creates more photosynthesis it gets more solar panels it creates more goodness and you get the bigger vegetables so that's what I do remember crocodile dundee he said that's not a beetroot that's a beetroot see that's a nice beetroot it's from another part of the garden over there but it had plenty of space to spread its wings and grow its leaves that one had plenty of plenty of room as well and obviously had plenty of good compost right there where it was i know they don't look so beautiful 
But I can tell you they're full of all the goodness that you need. We've got some carrots. And these ones I got from this part of the garden. They're doing a lot better. So I'll chuck them in the bucket. Oh, that's a nice little harvest. So I'll just put this up. Oh, look. I can't stop finding food to harvest. I'll just have to grab these as well. Nice little eggplants here. See how beautiful and shiny they are. Look at that. So eggplant, you can eat eggplant any size. This little one here, is, you can eat that if you wanted to. Or the big one. Or you can even wait till they get bigger. It's one of those yummy fruits like zucchini. You can kind of eat it any size. But um, I think time's up with this video. I didn't get much into the vegetable garden. Telling you much about the vegetable garden. But there's plenty of time. So I'll see you on the next video. So that's it for this video everybody. I'm going to wrap it up here. And I'll show you around the garden on the next video. I'll take this down to Mrs. Weedy now and, and see what she reckons. I reckon she's going to be overjoyed with all these mangoes because we both love mangoes. So there wasn't a lot to learn on this video except that if you want to have a good life, you can create it yourself. Okay, so have a, have a nice day everybody and I'll catch you on the next video.